Hey, welcome to the Guarantee Retirement Guys show. So we're going to talk today about annuity death benefits. How are they taxed? I get this question a lot because clients of mine that are looking for income guarantees as far as growth, they also want to make sure that their beneficiaries aren't taxed to death. And so there are ways to avoid it or defer it, but most of the time you're going to be paying taxes, okay? So it just really depends on how you want to do it. So with annuities, it really depends on whether it's inside of an IRA or a Roth, or maybe it's just money that was put into an annuity and there is no vehicle that it's inside. There's no IRS basket, no qualified account. It's, just, it's what's called a non-qualified annuity. So on non-qualified annuities, you're not taxed on the basis. So if, if someone puts in $500,000 into an annuity and it earns two hundred grand, then typically when you're inheriting it, you're not paying tax on a cost basis. So the $500,000, you're not paying tax on it because it was already taxed. But the $200,000 of earnings, you are taxed and it's usually taxed as ordinary income. So people ask, well, how are they able to not pay taxes or defer it? Well, if you're a spouse, and especially, you know, if you're the beneficiary, you can choose to continue the income, joint income, if that's what it was elected. And of course, that just continues to defer any tax if you were to take it out in a lump sum. But at the same time, if you're someone that just, most of my clients, they've inherited from their parents. And, you know, let's say your IRA is worth $200,000. Well, if it's an IRA, all the money that went into that was never taxed. It was tax deductible, right? All the premiums, all the contributions were tax deductible, and so were the interest. Any, any interest that it earns, any growth that it earns was all tax deferred. So because of that, the entire $200,000 that is coming out of that will be taxable as ordinary income. You don't get any special capital gains treatment for that. So keep that in mind. So and that's important because a lot of people are worried about, you know, the beneficiaries or kids or whoever, you know, whoever's going to inherit your estate. They're worried about, you know, them having to basically clean everything up and make sure taxes are paid because typically you're paying taxes. Taxes are due within nine months of your death. And so if they have to liquidate a bunch of stuff, especially in a fire sale, that's not going to be too much fun, especially when they have to come up with that tax. And so a lot of times having life insurance is really an important part of estate planning because when the life insurance proceeds are, are paid, they can use that to satisfy any type of estate taxes, especially if they've got a bunch of inherited IRAs and they really don't want to um, pull the money out that allows them to be able to do that. With inherited IRAs, you can still, like if I, if my parents died, I could take um, their IRA and it would be an inherited IRA and I could put it into a personal IRA for myself. I could do that, but I'm still subject to the rules. Uh, you know, the current rules right now are that I have to take that money out within 10 years. So the IRS wants their tax and so they're going to get it. And so basically what happens is I might just decide to take that out over 10 years and get slowly taxed, or I might take it out all at once and get taxed at a really high rate because you know it pushes your tax bracket up, or I could just defer it for a while and get some growth and maybe take take a little bit of uh, income or a little bit of you know money out of it every year, but I could stick it in a fixed index annuity with growth. So right now I've got a client, uh, he wants to put in um, some money from his an inherited IRA, and we looked at a seven-year index annuity with, with a pretty decent uh, participation rate that's going to last him a long time. So he can get some growth. He could take withdrawals from it if he wants during that time, um, but he's just going to maximize what he can get. So instead of maybe taking 200 grand out over 10 years, he might make he might take 300 or 400. You never know what the growth will be. So, and he'll be able to take out just more. He's still taxed on it, but uh, but he's just he's just maximizing what he can get out of it. You really can't get away from taxes. I got a lot of people that will try to find ways to get out of it. There really is very limited ways, especially when it's in a qualified account. So you can do a 1035 exchange um, if you want to exchange that annuity for another annuity. That is a way to defer taxes on something like that. But that's something like if you wanted to, what I would recommend for that is, is um, I mean, you could do that with with maybe a six or seven year MIGA, uh, you know, if you need to take it out over 10 years. Um, 
So if it's if it's a non-qualified annuity, it's not subject to that 10-year rule. So if it's just an annuity, you just you know you, you it's a non-qualified annuity that your parents had put money in, and now now you inherited it. It's not in an IRA. Then you have a little bit more leeway on what you can do with that. A lot of times there is money left over from an annuity, even if you are taking income. A lot of people think that the money is going to be completely gone, and sometimes it is before you die. But a lot of times it's not. I do meet with clients where their you know their mom has been taking guaranteed income for you know for 10 years after their dad died and then they still had some type of balance to leave behind so that's pretty nice the income stops because if it's guaranteed income going to two spouses then it's for their lives okay so the income will stop but but the death benefit is usually the cash value of the account and the nice thing about uh, when someone dies is there are no surrender charges so the, the insurance company is not going to charge the kids surrender charges to take that money out, even if it's within the 10-year surrender charge period. So if it's just a super new annuity and something happens and uh, you know the parents both pass away and they happen to have a joint income, then they're going to get the whole account. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. They're not going to be um, dinged for, uh, for taking it early on something like that. So so they all they all give you that. And a lot of them will give you waivers for like terminal illness where you could take the money out early. Um, so if so if you need it for like medical bills or you just want to go on vacation, you could do that. Even for nursing home care, a lot of them will give you that as well where you could take all the money out um, be, you know before before you get terminally ill or before you die um, so you can enjoy it or use it for for whatever you need it for. So anyways, that's important to know. Um, and it's important to know uh, when you set up annuities, it's important to know the consequences for your heirs. Okay, it's important to know what the tax consequences will be, and then how you, as the annuity owner, can really help your beneficiaries if you set it up right. So that's it for today. If you've got questions on this, if you want to book a call with me, if you're thinking about purchasing an annuity and you're looking for um, just the best way to do it and the best way to use it for yourself, and also, of course, uh, if you want to leave it behind, the best way to do that, we can talk. So there is a link below this video. You will notice that it will go straight to my calendar. Just pick a time that works for you, and we'll go over whatever you're looking for. Okay, whatever questions are, just bring them, bring them to the meeting. Happy to help. So appreciate you watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one. 